Hi there, this is Maria Jonsson and Louise Wallenberg from Sweden speaking. Thank you, Susan, for inviting us to participate in the book. And thank you, WIFT, Sweden and Carla for having us on the program. Our chapter is called Experiencing Male Dominance in Swedish Film Production. And it is based on interviews we have made with women working in the film industry. And it discusses their experiences and how they relate to the three goals of Swedish gender equality policies, namely to increase the share of women behind the camera, to encourage more nuanced portrayals of women and women's stories on screen, and to improve women's working condition, conditions in the film industry. And before we go into our three recommendations, uh, we would like to provide some background. Recently, the Swedish Film Institute and the Swedish film industry have been hailed for their successful gender equality work. However, despite the success in increasing the number of women behind the camera, much remains to be done. In 2016, SF Studios, one of the major film producing companies in Sweden, was shaken by a series of revelations of overt sexism and discrimination. And similar to many other countries, the Me Too movement in Sweden disclosed the extent of sexual harassment in the film and TV industries. Also in economic terms, there is still a long way until gender equality is reached. In 2018, the Swedish Film Institute undertook an investigation which led them to conclude that films with a woman as director, producer or scriptwriter generally have lower budgets than films with men on these positions. Significantly, the largest difference in budgets correlates with the gender of the main protagonist. Films with a male lead have on average a 33% higher budget than films with a woman lead. Despite the fact that gender equality efforts seemingly have not overthrown male privilege in the Swedish film industry, the critique against the formal goal of an equal share of women and men on key creative roles in films produced with public support, which was int introduced in 2006, has been plentiful. Several industry stakeholders consider it to be in conflict with already existing objectives to produce quality film that reach a considerable number of ticket buyers. The CEO of the Film Institute, Anna Sanner, has been targeted in media for promoting quotas before quality and that the, and I'm quoting, gender Stalinism of Swedish, the Swedish Film Institute endangers the arm's length principle in cultural policy. Our interpretation is that the number of women behind the camera has increased in Sweden, so has the critique of gender equality measures. In this context, it is interesting to note that the first three among the top 10 Swedish films in, Sweden, in the Swedish Film Institute's quality ranking since 2007 have a woman as director, namely Amanda Kernell's Sami Blood from 2016, Anna Hodel's The Reunion from 2013, and Lisa Skans' She Monkeys from 2011. Based on the results of our chapter, we have formulated three recommendations to three parties involved in making film more gender equal. Our first giveaway is directed to distributors and other private finances of films. One of our findings is that women filmmakers who wish to portray women who are not immediately likable or do not behave according to ideas and norms of femininity encounter several problems. Their authority is being questioned on the set. Their films are often categorized as special or marked as deviant in terms of gender, and they have problems to get funding. Making use of the principle of following the money, we would like to address finances and distributors and argue that this problem to portray women in less stereotypical ways would be significantly smaller if they, during a month, let's say September 2020, committed to observe 50 women in their surrounding with an open eye. We believe that they would find that women behave and look very differently and that women who are not immediately likable may indeed be very interesting. Our second giveaway is directed to the audience. Our study indicates that distributors and financers believe that non-stereotypical portrayals of women are non-intelligible and that they will not sell. Therefore, we would like to urge you to manifest your interest in viewing films that present women in more nuanced ways by using so-called boycotting, that is specifically buying tickets to films that portray women out of the box. Older women, black women, native women, lesbian women. 
trans women, disabled women, women who are not immediately sexy or likable, women who primarily interact with other women, women who reject men, women who love men but still are portrayed as leading their own life. The list can be made long. Our third giveaway is directed to women in the film industry. Our interviews show that women in the industry are extremely capable. In the day-to-day -day practice, they maneuver situations that are almost impossible to solve. They make up strategies to get funding and to retain their authority on the set. They deal with whining men, with discrimination and harassment. And they make their lives work juggling mothering duties and in an industry that is still based on male norms of creativity where everyone has to work until they puke, as one of our interview participants put it. We have also found that in the midst of these harsh conditions, women have made use of the structures produced by gender equality policy and created pockets of resistance. And to you all women who struggle in the film industry, we encourage you to unite, to share your experiences and to formulate your demands for better conditions. There's a world out there who needs your films. Thank you. Hope to see you soon. Bye.